Hello and welcome to our channel. Today I wanted to talk about network address translation and how to deal with it on OPN Sense and PFSense firewalls. Today's video is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I'll cover all of the NAT scenarios. I'll show you my existing rules on the firewalls and I'll show you how to deal with port forwards, one-to-one -one NAT and outbound NAT. Now, traditionally, let's move on to the presentation I prepared for you to cover the theoretical part before I show you the real world examples. So what is the NAT? NAT is the network address translation and it was invented to translate your internal IP addresses into external IP addresses by your router firewall. Here in this green block, I have most of the private IP addresses covered. There are a few exceptions to that, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video because this is gonna be too much of a theoretical rant. Some of the private IP address examples are 10.4.1.2, 192.168.0.4, .1 .2, or 172.168.0.4, Anything that you see here on the screen, this is private. And general rule of thumb is that anything that's not private is considered public. Now, why NAT was implemented in the first place? Well, two reasons for that. Security reasons, because if everything was connected directly to the internet, it's gonna be a security nightmare. And second reason, is there are simply not enough IPv4 addresses to cover all of the network devices in the world right now. I mean, maybe it was the case in 1990, but today when everyone has from one to five devices of their own, it's just not viable solution. Okay, let's move on to the NAT types. There are two types of NAT that you're gonna have to be concerned with, the outbound NAT and the inbound NAT. Now let's move on to the next slide. Here we have some random client on the internet that wants to connect to mail.yourdomain.com on port 25. Through the internet and DNS servers and all that, it resolves the IP address to being 51.2.55.1. And the request is still coming in on port 25. So that request comes into our firewall. Firewall goes through the inbound NAT rules then when it finds the rule that says when you receive the request on this IP and this port, forward this to the internal IP and internal port. You can see here that we have a different port on the inside than on the outside. And that's basically what you can do with any inbound NAT rule. You have that flexibility to specify a different port that goes on the internal address rather than its publicly available port. Hopefully that makes sense so far. And before I move on to the practical example, I wanted to cover one more slide. Imagine the situation where we have a client on the inside that wants to access our hosted resource. It's gonna be a waste if it will go to the internet and then back to the firewall and then to our email server VM. So we're gonna configure a feature here that will tell the firewall if you receive anything from this client, don't go out to the internet, route the traffic straight back to the VM. And the feature is called NAT reflection. Now, when we have the inbound NAT covered, let's move on to some practical examples. I'll start with OPN Sense here. And if you wanna get to the inbound NAT rules section, go to firewall, NAT, and port forward. Then hit add a new rule and follow my example over here. It's a new rule, so we don't want it disabled. Interface section is very interesting, particularly on the OPN sense. So remember of that net reflection feature I told you about just a minute ago? Well, on the OPN sense, you're gonna have to mark every interface that will have access to the net reflection in this very rule. If you don't do it, net reflection will not work. I don't know if it's a bug or a feature, but I learned it the hard way configuring many port forwards and then troubleshooting the net reflection issues, things like that. PFSense has a different issue with this, but for OPN Sense, remember, if you want your net reflection to work, mark all of the internal interfaces that you want 
to work this on. And of course, additionally, you need to mark the external interface that will receive the request from the external client. Then for the IP version, I have IPv4 here. Um, protocol is TCP. And the destination itself is going to be one of your externally available IP addresses. It can be set to something like WAN NAT address. But in my particular case, I need this IP to be translated into the internal one. Destination port range in my case is HTTP, but you can easily set it to other and input the random port on your firewall. The redirect target IP is your internal resource and the redirect target port is the port that's open on your internal resource. Pool options is a unique feature to OPN Sense and with it, you can do some basic load balancing. For example, if you have multiple VMs on the back end, you can have one public IP address and OPN Sense will forward everything to the set of the back end IP addresses. Um, although for it to work, you need to create an alias and add all of your desired internal IP addresses to the alias and then choose one of the pool options, something like round robin or round robin with sticky address. If you need to log your packets for troubleshooting or whatnot, um, tick this checkbox, give your rule a description, local tag and match local tag. Um, this is something you use in very advanced scenarios where you have double NAT and things like that. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Most of you will not need this like ever and filter rule association. I already have a rule here, but you're going to have to check the tick box to allow the automatic rule creation. If you are not into that and you want to create a rule manually, just leave the box unticked and create rule manually. Hit save, apply changes and you're good to go. That's pretty much all you need to do on the OPN sense to get this working. If you want to do the same on PF sense, Go to firewall, NAT, and then port forward. Create a new rule and follow my example. We don't want to disable this rule. Choose the interface you want to receive the traffic on. Then choose the protocol. Then the destination. If you have multiple IP addresses, choose the destination here. But as you can see over here, I only have one IP address bind to this interface. And here you have a perfect example how to choose the native IP address of the interface instead of the separate one. The destination port range is 2209 in my case. Redirect target IP is 10.16.0.14. That's the IP address of the internal VM. Redirect target port is 22 or SSH. If you click other, you can specify the custom port. Leave some description. NAT reflection. I have the pure NAT turned on by default in my system. If you're very curious, you can go to NetGate website, um, look for NAT reflection and check for yourself what's the difference between NAT plus proxy and pure NAT. Um, but to save you some trouble, in most cases, in like 99% of the time, you're going to have to choose the pure NAT option. Um, hit save apply and you mostly good to go. There is one caveat as there was with OPN sense on PF sense. If you have blocked the traffic going from local machine to local machine and you are exposing that local machine to the internet, you're not going to be able to reach that particular resource even over the port forward on the public IP. What you have to do is you need to create a firewall rule on the internal interface that will allow this to happen. I'll show you an example. So I have some resource sitting in V1 default NAT and I want to reach proxy that's exposed to the outside world. I cannot do that unless I add a specific rule that allows that to happen. And in my case, it's V1 default NAT to v6 web proxy. If you're interested on how pfSense internal rules work, um, I have another video about that on my channel. You can search for pfSense LAN rules explained. 
But that's basically how you tackle the inbound NAT scenario. Now with the inbound NAT covered, let's move on to the outbound NAT. And you probably have a question, why do we even need outbound NAT? Well, there are a few scenarios where we need to configure this. One would be when you have email server and you need to specify the PTR record to the uh, specific IP address. And then you're going to need to specify the SPF record for the specific IP address. Also the SMTP banner, things like that. Most of the time, the outbound NAT needs to be configured on your firewall when you have multiple external IP addresses assigned to it. And I'll cover two scenarios where you have similar configuration that requires the outbound NAT. But then first we have public IP address assigned by DHCP. So we need one physical interface per IP. And the other one has PPPoE or it can be PPTP or statically assigned via your ISP supplied router block of IP addresses that are assigned to one single interface. For the outbound rules, I'll also start with OPN Sense. And if you want to configure that, go to firewall NAT outbound. First and foremost, switch from automatic outbound rule generation to hybrid. This is going to give you a way of adding some manual rules at the top, but you will keep a benefit of firewall creating some internal rules automatically without you having to manage it. When you've selected that, click save, apply, you're good to go. Then create a new rule and follow my example. Interface is the external interface you want your traffic to go from IPv4 in my case, protocol any. Source address is the internal resource source address or alias. You can also configure a source port if you need to, but this is a advanced example that I'm not gonna cover. Destination address any, destination port any, then translation target. This is gonna be a external IP address. And I have them listed here because the internet connection type on this OPN Sense box is PPoE. And I have the ability of adding virtual IP addresses to one interface. In your case, you might be only able to choose one of your interfaces IP addresses. Activate the log option if you want to have the persistent logs for this rule. Translation port also belongs to the advanced use case that I'm not going to cover here. Pool options is the same thing that you had for the inbound rules. This way you can load balance your traffic that's going out to the internet. Skip the local tag part, give it a description, hit save, apply, and you're good to go. One quick tip before I move on to PFSense. If you want to check if this worked, go to one of your Windows machines and um, Google my IP address and check if it's really the IP address you configured it to use. But if the internal resource is the Linux machine, use curl if config.me, press enter, and it's going to show you your public IP that you configured. And if it shows you the different address from the one that you configured, you need to go back and revise your settings. Moving on to PFSense, go to firewall, NAT, outbound, as well as in the previous example, click hybrid outbound NAT, hit save, apply, and you're good to go. This feature is identical on both platforms. Now go ahead and add a new rule, choose the interface, Again, a side note before I continue the configuration. This is the DHCP configuration, as you might remember from the inbound NAT section. And there is only one external IP address per interface. So with that covered, let's move on. Address family is IPv4 in my case, protocol any. Source, choose network and then specify the IP address of the internal resource and put the slash 32 bit at the end. Destination any. For the translation, choose the external IP address of your interface. In my case, it's interface address. Give it a description, hit save, apply, and that's pretty much it. Don't forget to go to your VM and actually check if the setting was applied. One last thing I wanted to cover in this video today is one to one NAT. And one-to-one -one NAT is designed to bind a specific internal IP address 
to the external IP address. So you don't need to do any port forwarding in that case, you just need to open firewall ports. So there is still a firewall between the internal resource and the internet, but the network translation is done automatically from the outside in and from the inside out. This approach doesn't have many useful use cases, but you might sell your client direct access to one of your internal boxes and they want to manage everything regarding that host. One-to-one -one NAT is your friend in this scenario. Another use case would be a PBX server. All of our PBX servers are hidden behind the VPN, but there are some people that cannot afford or don't have technical know-how um, how to hide the server behind the VPN. So they need to expose the servers with one-to-one -one NAT. This is really not recommended, but the only way how your PBX server will work with the external IP address is actually one-to-one -one NAT. So let's start with the OPN Sense firewall first again. Before you even start adding one-to-one -one NAT rules, go to Firewall, Settings, Advanced, and hit this checkbox. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hard time figuring out how to enable the NAT reflection for one-to-one -one rules. Save and apply your settings, then go to NAT, one-to-one. -one. And this is much simpler than something we had before. We just need to choose the interface, the type, which is usually by NAT in like 99% of the cases. External network is your public IP address and the source is your internal resource. Destination any, give it a description, NAT reflection enable, hit save, apply, and that's pretty much it. Moving on to the PFSense, you wanna go to system, advanced, firewall and NAT, scroll, approximately to the middle of the page and find enable net reflection for one-to-one -one NAT. Enable it, save and apply settings. After that, go to firewall NAT one-to-one -one and add a new rule. Here you can specify the interface, then external IP address, internal IP address, leave the destination as any, give it a description and enable net reflection. Hit save, apply, and the rule is ready. When you are configuring one-to-one -one NAT, there is a possibility for you to specify a different block of IP addresses. For example, I wanna forward internal slash 28 to the external slash 28. Although you can do that, I really don't recommend you do because if something happened to break, you're gonna have a hard time figuring out what broke and where exactly. So unless you must do it this way, I really recommend against it. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you found this content useful, please consider donating to our PayPal. It really helps to keep the lights on in the studio. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.